Blockchain tracks. Now he's globally acknowledged as the richest Indian of late. His net worth has slumped by a couple of billions of pounds. But what does it take to become a billionaire? Who would know better than Lakshmi Mittal? But before he got there, he was told he couldn't get admission to a college of his choice because he didn't speak English. He sat down with NDTV's Rahul Joglika to talk about his younger days. Today's guest is indeed very special. His story spans several continents, starting in Rajasthan, why Calcutta, why Indonesia, and now in London. He's often called the King of Steel. And we're very, very fortunate to be joined by Mr. Mithal today. Uh, Mr. Mithal, my first question to you is, and this is on a day when you've been awarded the Global Xavierian Award. This is an award given out by St. Xavier's University every year to a global achiever. But the irony is not lost on anyone, sir, because this is a university that you almost didn't get admission to. So tell me a bit about, uh, about that experience and how did it change you and how did it make you the business person you are today? Oh. First of all, I'm very honored that uh, St. Javis decided to honor me with this global JVN award. Uh, the story goes back to when I was 16 years old. I passed my Hindi medium school in Kolkata and then applied for admission in St. Javier's. Since I came from Hindi medium school, Father Joris at the time, who was a principal, felt that I would not be able to fit in in an English medium college. Though I was top in my class in school, I got admission in other, in other colleges, but I really wanted to study in St. Javier's. So I kept on knocking his door every day and finally he gave it up and I promised him that I'll be a good student and which I did. And, and how did this experience sort of shape, uh, shape you as a business person? I mean you're breaking down doors, breaking ceilings, is that something that you learned at St. Xavier's? Uh, it was a challenge for me to prove Father Joris wrong that coming from Hindi medium school cannot do well in an English medium college and that challenge really gave me a lot of learnings. I determined myself that I would prove him wrong and I really dedicated myself, committed to myself that I have to accept this challenge and continue to work hard, focus on the studies. And this is a great learning in the business life. That first of all, you have to have a commitment, dedication and passion for what you are doing. As I said, uh, everyone works hard, but something needs to differentiate yourself with some others is to focus, dedicate, commit and continue to work hard. So your tryst with St. Xavier's could have been extended. You uh, were offered the job of a professor at the, at the, at the college, which you did not take, take up. Why did you not take it up and do you regret not doing that job? I was 19 years old when uh, this uh, lectureship was offered to me and for me, my satisfaction was when I taught in the university, proving Father Joris wrong, and that itself was a great satisfaction for me that uh, I achieved. And uh, I could have accepted uh, this job or this opportunity offered to me, but it was six o'clock in the morning and I had enough six o'clock uh, for many years. That was the most emotion at the time and nothing else. Today, if I have to have an alternate career, I would still like to be a professor or lecturer because I feel that uh, parting education, parting knowledge is a great cause for the society and for the students and but, for the leaders to come tomorrow. But sir, did you regret not taking up that job? I don't regret not taking the job I have a mixed feeling about this. Uh, should have taken, should not have. But whatever you do, whether it was a lecture, lecturer's job or a business, one thing I learned that uh, it's a hard life. Life has always been with a lot of challenges and whether it, I would be a lecturer or do any profession, uh, it's a big challenge and one has to continue to work hard for this.